hello today's problem will be problem number 693 that is binary number with alternating bits the problem statement is given a positive integer check whether it has alternating bits namely if two adjacent bits will always have different values so let's take an example of what the problem statement states is so we are given an input n is equals to 5 and we are returning true why so because the binary representation of 5 is 101 and at every position it has different bits preceding to the bits before it or the adjacent bits we can tell so at 0 we have 1 at 1 we have 0 so the uh, next positions bit is 1 so this should return as true let's take an example of 10 so this is the binary representation of 10 it has different bits in every position so this will give true again and let's see how we're going to do it so the intuition behind the program is to first take and store the last bit of our integer or the value given so how we'll find the value so we'll just do n mod 2 and we'll get our last index values so x will be storing 0 and we'll simply take y we should not take y first let me just first delete it so after taking x x is our last bit so we'll delete our last value because we have taken x we need to compare two adjacent bits right so we'll be comparing 0 and 1 so x is storing my 0th bit so how will we store the first bit we'll simply delete this bit and we'll store this bit so n is equals to n by 2 so the 0th bit is deleted now so this is deleted our current bit look like this 101 so we'll store y is equals to n mod 2 so this will store my this bit this is our last bit right now so this will store this 0 and 1 and we'll just check if x is equals to y so if x is equals to y then we'll be returning false or else we will be returning true so this is our total algorithm so let me just show it in the code how we are going to do that so in the code we have taken a quite a bit uh, different approach than it just to save some more time so as we were here we were in the while loop this whole part was executing in the while loop this whole part so as we can see the x and the y these are getting repeated we do not need two variables to be repeated again and again we can do it with just one though we'll be requiring two variables to store the value of x and y or the current and the previous values but we can do this in only one operation and store it so how are we going to do that let me just erase this okay so this should do again we'll be taking the example of 1010 that is 10 1010 so first we will store the last bit in our x value our x variable that is n mod 2 and then we'll, we'll uh, we will enter our while loop this is our while loop w so this is our while loop let's take this as our while loop and what we will do is we will store y is equals to x and why we are doing this i'll just get to it y is equals to x and then what we'll do is we'll just delete the last element like what we were doing in the previous example that i showed you so we'll just delete the last element and how we can do that we'll just do n by 2 so this is it and this statement is n is equals to n by 2 this statement is n is equals to n by 2 and the next statement will be x is equals to n mod 
2 so we have already deleted this part and now we are left with this bits so now we have left with this after this iteration so in this iteration we are having 101 as our current n so x is equals to n mod 2 this should store this bit here so we will store this bit here and we'll be comparing y is equals to is equals to x and y is equals to is equals to x so what was y's value y's value was the previous value here which we deleted that is zero so y's value was zero and x's value is one so is zero is equals to one no so we'll continue and if y is equals to x that means if there were to be zero instead of one then if this is one zero zero and this is also zero or this could be one even so if zero is equal to a zero that means the zeroth position value and the one position value is are both equal then we'll be returning false or else we'll be just returning true and the code part is let's get to the code part and this is just the implementation of it and i have done here the zor operation here which simply means n is equal to n by 2 nothing so dramatic nothing too different it's just a basic zor operation if you know it and this should return false and this should return true so what i'm doing here is i'm just taking the last index value i'll be iterating over the loop and then I'll be storing y is equals to x that was done here, y is equals to x, which will store my previous and current value of the bits. And then I'll be returning. So let's run the code. Okay, this gets accepted. Let's run some sample test cases. And let's submit it. And this is working perfectly fine. And there's a much cooler way to do this problem. So that is with bit manipulation. And I'll be showing that too. And I'll be just erasing this part, the whole part. What is this? And let me take an example of let's just take 10 again so that is 1 0 1 0 so this is 10 our n value and we know the zor property that is if if we do 1 zor 0 then it should give me 1 and if we do zor of the same bits that is 1 1 will be getting 0 or if we do of 0 and 0 will be getting zero so that is it so we'll just do the zor of this number that is one zero one zero with the right shift of n to one that is n will be right shifted to one that is 